Here's a Hebrew word. I remember seeing this in Israel. You can pronounce this. I'm going to tell you, this is a wow with a dot over it. That's actually the long vowel O. It's the same vowel we had, if you'll remember, in shalom. Oh, I erased shalom from the board. Would we have shalom? Huh? Remember? When we had shalom up here, it had this, and I said this was a vowel. I'll explain that on another day. Uh, that's the long vowel O. So back to our uh, back to our modern Hebrew word here, we that starts with kolf. We have so this would be how if we were transcribing this, what would this be? Q O. It's a long O. Now you got another kolf, uh, and that comets that we already learned with a K hey at the end, which is an H sound, and then this uh, this word goes on with another kolf and another o vowel and now we get a lamed and another comet's hay. Can you sound out? This is modern Hebrew now. You're learning a little bit. This is not a biblical word. I, we haven't found it in the Old Testament yet, uh, even under drought conditions. But it is in fact kol ka kola. Right. There you go. It's on billboards all over Israel even as we speak. Okay. Um, Raish. Moving right along now. <laughs> um, over and down. Uh, just a nice square corner, but it's a little rounded here. It's not, uh, it's not tight, okay? And again, you can put a, you can just do this. I tend to put just a little bit of a flare on that thing. Uh, but the raish is the R sound. Okay? You could see that coming. All right. Uh, three to go, but we got uh, two to get three here. Okay? You'll notice that the next two letters are really the same sign. Right? This is the sign we saw in Shalom with that opening, uh, uh, I don't know what to call this. What shall we call it? It's kind of a pitchfork thing. Except that uh, the, the, the hour hand here is at 7 o'clock. Huh? You sort of make a bowl, and then you have this angle one, but it doesn't go straight up and down. Okay? Kind of comes in at about 7.30, huh? 7 o'clock over here. Now, the only difference between a sin and a shin is not the letter itself, but this little dot on top of the letter. All right? In the sin, the dot's on the left side. In the shin, the dot's on the right side. This is not a dogish. This is not a dogish lane. It is just the part of the letter. The sin has the dot on the left and sounds a lot like a somic, uh, so that uh, it's hard to tell the difference in sound. And the shin, which is the most common of all of these uh, three S sounds, with the dot on the right. And that's that SH sound uh, marked by the little uh, a carrot thing, SH. As we had in the word shalom, remember, uh, uh, back uh, when, when we came in here. That's the S of shalom, remember? So um, now, there's a real simple way to remember the difference between a sin and a shin, and it's a simple theological truth. To sin is not right. I think that's a, a, a true statement. To sin is not right. Uh, what that means, of course, is that the sin does not have the dot on the right, but has the dot on the left. So the sin has it on the left because the sin is not right, and the shin has it on the right. Uh, 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 and maybe that helps. I don't know. Um, sometimes it's easier just to remember what it is than to remember what it is we're used to try to remember uh, what it is. But um, that's, uh, that's uh, the, perhaps some, some help in remembering that sin on the left, shin on the right. Sin, shin. And then finally, the last letter, tau. Tau. Now, the tau is an over and down. We make it uh, sort of like we were going to make uh, the base at the beginning or a haith or some of the other letters. But now this vertical, the left hand side, 
uh, leaves just a little bit of an overhang there, not much, but the key to this is that instead of coming straight down and stopping, it kicks out here with a little bit of a foot, a rounded foot. So a tath is over and down and then leave a little overhang, but the key is this kind of curve at the end, tau. Sin, shin, tau. You might notice, finally, that the tau is the last of the letters that can take this dagish lene, and therefore this is the last letter that we can add to our list up here of these dagish lene letters, and that would be tau. In fact, in fact, uh, this now completes the list, okay? And uh, let me, let me uh, uh, teach you the acronym by which these are categorized, okay? If you put these six letters, did I tell you there were six letters? If you put these six letters together, uh, lumping those first three, because they came together, and then the other three uh, as the other three, and you just uh, try to say them, you get the word Begad Kafat. Begad Kafat, or Kapat if you want all these to have hard signs, sounds. Uh, but that's really just made by making two words out of this, Begad Kafat. Now, this is a technical term. That is to say, uh, teachers and, and uh, people will talk about a letter as being a Begad Kafat letter. And what we mean by that is simply that it's one of these six letters that can take doggish laney, depending on whether it's hard or soft. If it has the doggish, then it's hard. If it, do if it doesn't have the doggish, then it's soft. And all the transcriptions would have a, a line uh, over or under it, depending on how the letter is written in English. Those are the Bagad Kafath letters. So we've now completed the entire alphabet including noting some of these subcategories within uh, the, the alphabet itself. Uh, probably the most important one are these six letters that can take Dagesh Laini, the so-called Begat Kafath letters. We also noted that there are four letters that we call guttural letters, and they're going to give us some problems. They do some irregular things when it comes to spelling. We'll get to that in due course. And I've tried to group them because Aleph and Ayin uh, sometimes almost form a little pair, and He and Heith sometimes form a little pair. There is a fifth letter that should be sort of included as a guttural, and that's the letter Reish. The letter Reish. Now, Reish, I'll put in parentheses, it's kind of its own category. Um, uh, we'll come to see that gutturals do two things uh, that are funny. They'll cause us two different problems in spelling, and Reish gives us one problem in spelling. So it's sort of half as troublesome as the, uh, the real gutturals, so it's sort of half of a guttural, but when we list the gutturals, we have to include Reish at least in parentheses.